I'm going to start with addition. Uh, that one slide in particular gives you a little bit of an overview, a snapshot of all the progression that is covered here at Hillside, starting on with a uh, number track at the start, uh, which would be early as foundation stage, onto number line work, which eventually ends up with a more standard, compact method of recording that you yourselves might be familiar with. Um, and Mrs. Fletcher Curran, and Mr. Gota and myself are then going to explain the different stages in more detail. When children first come into reception, the majority of them can count to ten. Um, but they don't always know what the number means, so they haven't got conservation of number. They don't know that five means five objects. They just are counting by rote. So we do lots of number work, lots of practical activities, counting how many apples in the basket um, and putting the corresponding number with it so that they get number recognition as well because a lot of them don't recognise the numbers they can't order the numbers so we do lots of ordering um, activities that you can do at home are um, setting the table can you help us set the table we need four nines and four forts how many have we got all together and it's the language as well so we talk about all together how many more um, one more um, adding plus it's lots of different language, so they get to know, because at first, at first they don't know what one more means or one less, so it's lots of different language for them as well. Um, we do different strategies, so we start off, like, like Linda said, with the number track. So we'll have a number line, a fancy number line, we've got spiders and spacemen and different things. And we'll use a puppet, and the children jump along the line with the puppet. So seven add three, so we'll put the puppet on the number seven, how many jumps do we need to make? And we'll jump along three. The children, we have a track on the, um, on the floor, so the children will jump themselves how many, how many jumps they need to jump. So they're doing lots of practical activities, or even with a teddy bear jumping along the number track. Uh, we also use um, our fingers, so we'll say, Seven add three, so count seven, and how many more do we need to count using our fingers? Uh, one thing that, that the children don't do is they always, if we say five add two, they'll go back and they'll count the five. They know they've got five fingers, but they always go back and count them. So I encourage them to count on from the number that they're given. So I encourage them that you know you've got five, or you know that seven, what comes next? What number comes next in the number line? So it's getting to know the numbers, being really familiar with them, and where they come in the number line. Uh, we might use multi-link or counters. So with the multi-link, we make a tower of seven and a tower of three. Put them together, how many have we got now, and count them again. Um, put in the biggest number in your head. So... Put seven in your head and count on three, particularly as you get to bigger numbers, when, you, when you're going to numbers beyond ten. Um, as the children become more familiar with the number and more confident as we move along the year, um, they need to learn the number bonds by heart. So the number bonds initially to ten, so we do lots of work. 7 and 3, 6 and 4, 8 and 2. Getting to know them so they know them off by heart. It helps them when they move on to bigger numbers. And then we move on to number bonds to 20. Um, counting in twos, we, we do a counting in twos where we, we tap our knees and we whisper the number 1 and then 2, 3, 4, five. Just encourage them to know that they can count in twos if you want and counting in tens as well. It's all just, it's very basic, very practical. We do record and we do move on to worksheets and numbers and making number sentences, but it's all very practical. So even if they're doing a number sentence, if they're unsure, they can go and get some counters or some, some of the little elephants or pigs and they can help themselves by doing that. We do ladybirds, we've got ladybirds with spots on one side and they have to make it to ten and they have to add the, uh, the, the spots on the opposite side to make the number to ten. Can I just first of all say the stages at the top of the, the uh, PowerPoint don't represent 
reception year one, two, and three. It's just the progression that they will make as they're moving through with regards to addition, then subtraction, multiplication, and so on. So stage two may come at some point in year one, it may come at some point in year two, just depending on where the children are ready. So moving on from the very, very practical addition, we'll then look at using the number line in a, I won't say in a more formal way, but it's still not the formal methods that you might reach when you're in key stage two. So ca- starting at the bigger number, counting on, and as Mr. Fletcherman said, making sure that they put the bigger number in their head and count on from there rather than having to count them all again. Um, which will then move on to partitioning numbers into their tens and units. So if we're going to add two two-digit numbers, we can partition the numbers and we can, we can add them together. So for example, the 13 and 11, we know that there's one ten in 13 and three units, and one ten and one unit. So we can add the tens, we can add the units, and we can move, move on that way, again, using the number line there. Um, that would be the start of partitioning size with the, the tens and units, and then it would move on to the next... One, where we use arrow cards, so we can separate the number into the tens and units again. And it, throughout this, this stage here, you really wouldn't have crossed, a, uh, crossed the number 10. So the numbers would tend to be, um, for example, you wouldn't have 29 plus 16, because they would have to add the 6 and the 9 to then get, your, get to another 10. That would be the next stage on from there, really. So you'd always stay within the 10, you wouldn't bridge across, across that. So using the arrow cards, you can, have, you can see we, we look at numbers up to 100 and then move on beyond that. But again, it's still written very, very informally as a number sentence working your way across, looking at what the numbers you're using, what they involve, how many tens, how many units. You're not looking at it necessarily as a a whole number, adding those two together just yet until we move on to then towards key stage two, really. Well, yeah, key stage one, beginning of key stage two. Okay. As we move into key stage two, you sort of see the layout of adding up is starting to look a little bit more familiar uh, with the more standard compact method. Uh, this is where the children um, work on bridging, adding up units that add to more than 10. And it's all based on the, their prior knowledge and their understanding of what the digits are actually representing in a number. For, so, for example, 43, uh, 28, you're actually adding your four tens and your two tens, your three units and your eight units. And that's the sort of the first more, rec- more sort of standard uh, recording of addition. Yet again, it's not the standard method that we would have recognised ourselves at school. Uh, and the children do this using place cards and place value apparatus alongside jottings that they might want to make might want to make. They partition, which means splitting up the numbers into the tens and units. They add the the tens, they add the units, and then they recombine them through their knowledge of counting on to get the actual answer. So they're actually using their knowledge of what the digits are actually representing um, to their knowledge of place value to add up tens and units. And this moves on to uh, the more formal compact method and that's the method we looked at before and it's linked to the more standard method with the carrying of the 10 which as you can see comes from the 8 out of the 3 that makes 11 um, and that will probably be the method that, that we might remember from school. So that's it. That's the in-between methods from the less standard uh, methods that will be taught in key stage one. And then obviously the children move on from there to adding uh, hundreds, um, numbers in the thousands, and also decimal numbers as well. And they use their knowledge of place value and understanding what each digit represents to be able to use that standard method. So obviously the children need to know what the digits are representing that they're actually adding up. Okay, so that's the main facts of uh, addition. Is anybody got any questions on adding up? Oh. When you got lots of that stage, I yeah. think it was the stage before. When they're adding, when yeah. they're adding the 60 and the 11, yeah. are they doing 60 and 11, or are they combining it with the earlier stage and doing 60 plus 10 plus 11, or do you what? expect more to be at that point? I think, well, obviously, they can use... We said about using jottings, and they would be starting from their 60 as their counting, as their beginning point, and then adding their 11 on from that, and then it sort of tramp, it sort of moves on to that method from there. 
So they would be obviously using their knowledge of number lines to informally count on from their 60 um, with 11. Different, I mean, different children work in different ways. Whenever I, I do a mental math test every week, as lots of key stage two and year two um, teachers do. And obviously, there are, it, everybody's brain works in different ways. And when we actually go through the answers to questions, one of the important things, um, parts of the lesson, is discussing different people's strategies and how they arrive at their answer and just respecting that there is always um, a different way to, to look at things and sometimes it, what doesn't work for you in one way might work in a different way.